What up, folks? I am Ultrazilla, and this is Ultrazilla Live. Got a really fun episode for you tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking with a Ben Yi of a Ben's World of Transformers, and we're going to be talking about the upcoming, really upcoming soon, uh, as far as Amazon is telling me right now, um, Transformers Kingdom line, which of course has the highly anticipated return of Beast Wars. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. And Ben had the opportunity to unbox some of these. So without any further ado, let's bring Ben in. What's up, Ben? Hey, man. How's it going? What's All up, right. everyone? How are you? Good, good. Real. I got a pile of Kingdom toys here. What can I say? Uh, I, can't be I mean, that's that is so <laughs> awesome. And uh it's good to actually see you. Last time you were on the channel with the uh, Repack podcast, uh, you were the symbol of <laughs> of uh, Transformers itself. So uh, really good to see you. Yeah, you you're all uh, seeing the first broadcast I've ever done with my brand new webcam, and that's mic, awesome. So I hope I'm coming through okay. Yeah, totally. Uh, real quick channel note: I should have said this before I brought you on, but to everyone uh, watching, stay tuned directly after we finish i'm going to be launching a another video that i recorded here on Streamyard. it doesn't look that great but it gets the job done uh because i wanted to do uh, i wanted to utilize what Streamyard has to offer here so i recorded a video a little bit earlier it's a godzilla reaction video based on something i'll reveal what towards the end so just to keep uh the folks wa watching a little bit in suspense um uh, what that is. So I'm going to launch it right after with a premiere. So it'll be interesting. All right. So I just want to let everybody know about that. That is watching. Hello, Darren Gill. Hello, Luminous. Hello, Shadow. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, we'll see if anybody else joins us along the way, but it's all cool because we're going to be talking. This is going to be up on YouTube. Uh, so they can watch anytime they want. So Ben, uh, let us, you, before we get into what you did, you had like a big event that happened personally with the relaunch of your Ben's World of Transformers. Thank Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, first, let me apologize. My cat's in the background. You're probably going to hear him at some point. We love cats. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, uh, Ben's World of Transformers, BWTF.com, uh, just relaunched about two and a half-ish weeks ago. Uh, this was after about five-ish months of being offline due to what I've been terming a catastrophic uh, back-end failure. Yeah. Um, basically, that means my server went kablooey. Uh, it took me almost a month to get my data uh, from the carrier. <laughs> and then I had to, because it was in a database form that I couldn't transition to the new site, I had to have friends help me break up that data into sizable chunks of notepad documents. And now the, the site is back in... Uh, with a new template, I'm on new servers, more reliable carrier, and I've restored a chunk of my site. Uh, there's still a lot of stuff I still have to get back in there, but I mean, I think before I launched, I restored easily like 300 pages. <laughs> and, wow. Uh, just to give people an idea of you know how big the site is, I've been around for over 20 years, mm -hmm. and when we broke out the database into individual articles, it came out to over 7,000 individual files. So apparently, I've written a lot over the years without realizing I, that, that number shocked even me. No, so. man, there, there's a reason why you are very well respected within the community. You know, yeah, besides, but, besides the site, you know, being involved in Transformers yourself, you know, like down before, like writing stuff. And yeah, man, this it's awesome. <laughs> well, you know, to the, what we're talking about tonight, you know, for those not in the know, uh, Beast Wars uh, in particular has a very sentimental place in my heart because I actually uh, acted as a fan consultant on some episodes of the series. So uh, I, there's a little piece of me in, in Beast Wars, I feel like, uh, to some degree. And anything Beast Wars related always gets a lot of, uh, a little bit of extra love <laughs> from, from my side. Uh, so I know it's not for everybody, but Beast Wars was definitely a significant part of my life as a Transformers fan. Now, and I, it helped save the, you know, it helped save the, uh, the, the, the Transformers line. Yeah, I was actually like out of Transformers at that point. Like I wasn't collecting, I wasn't, um, 
Like I, I wasn't reading any of anything, you know? So it was like, when that was out, I was actually, I had no idea about it. I didn't find out about Beast Wars until like much later, uh, which is, you know, weird. But like at the same time, I, I kind of appreciate that because when I did find out about it, it, it was so fascinating to me, like to have that, like this weird different chunk of Transformers history that I just didn't know about. So uh, it was very cool, and I, I've, you know, loved the designs ever since. Uh, and we, we we lost Ben. <laughs> He's around. I hear him. Yep, I'm getting my headphones as you requested, man. Very, very cool. Very cool. Um, but <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like uh, Beast Wars is an interesting thing to me because I never had any figures until. They uh, did that reissue, and it wasn't even Beast Wars, I think. It's like Beast Machines, like that uh, aerial, what's it called? It's the like a that big Optimus, Optimal Optimus type guy, yep. but like the one with the lights and sounds, I forget what it's called. Oh, you uh, mean from Beast Machines? Or? I think it's Beast Machines. He's like, he's he's way back in my display. Yeah, but. the Aerial Attack Optimus Primal is probably yes. the one you're thinking of. Yes, and they did like a Platinum Edition, I believe. Yes. That's the one I had. That was like my first like Beast oh. Anything toy was that. And ever since then, I've been kind of like, like I love, you know, everything <laughs> about it. So when they announced Kingdom, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I definitely, uh, you know, have to get into it because I've been skipping Earthrise for the most part, except for Skylinks. Right. Like that's that's the only thing I picked up from Earthrise uh, was Skylinks. So you know, I'm like way more invested into Kingdom right now because of the Beast Wars stuff and of course the Studio Series stuff, you know, upcoming. Well, what I think Beast Wars does is uh, just purely from a toy standpoint. It helps break up um, the the sameness, I think, of just having every single uh, part of, say, Earthrise or Siege mm -hmm. just being vehicle, 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 right? It's yeah. it's just a bunch of rectangles and ovals that become robots. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I love them. But mm -hmm. uh, I think if we are to just look at it from a purely marketing standpoint, at some point, you need to change things up a little bit mm -hmm. in every toy line. Now... What I think between Siege and the previous, the Prime Wars trilogy and, and, and Earthrise, the way they've tried to do that is through the gimmicks, right? So what right. gimmick did we introduce? That separates the lines from each other. But I think what Beast Wars does, it takes things one step further, and now it's a whole new form that, uh, you know, not just us collectors, but also, let's face it, little kids, you know, yeah, are, are going to look forward to. Little kids like critters, you know? They, oh, they yeah. That it, with the original Beast Wars line, they're going to prove that again with Kingdom, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, my son is like, like really into a lot of the more animalistic Transformers, uh, for sure. He loves Cheetor, like, <laughs> like he had to have the Cyberverse one, you know, like, so yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely something that appeals to kids for sure, you know, like, and I mean, I'm excited about. It. I, you know, obviously, you know, like I love monsters and dinosaurs and all of that and. I just love Optimus Primal. Like, I think he's so cool. Like, it's such a cool design. And, uh, you know, I have the masterpiece Optimus Primal, but that's the only one that I did get a masterpiece of was that first one. And then I was actually, I think that was the last of any of the MPs that I picked up was that mm -hmm. one. Um, You're going to need the Voyager. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 on pre-order. It's on pre-order in two spots. So it's like <laughs> whoever delivers it first, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, gets my money, that's for sure. But, you know, like I had like mentioned this up, you know, at the top that I just got a notice earlier today that Amazon is sending out the first piece. It got moved up like from like what, February? Um, that's like six to eight weeks early. Yeah. You're getting those things. You know, yeah. so, well, I'm just the one so far. Uh, and that's okay. Verte Vertebraker, Vertebraker, okay. whatever. Yeah. Vertebraker. So that's, yeah, that's the first one. I'll take any of them, you know, whichever ones I have. I believe I have those, the two 
fossilizers, right? They're called yep. fossilizers and um, the Beast Wars stuff so far okay. on, on pre-order. So, you know, so so far one. That's you. You know, I haven't heard anybody else talking about it. Granted, I haven't been all over forums today, so I don't know. You know, uh, maybe other people are getting, you know, finding them, but I feel like they're gonna start showing up because that's what happens. Yes, um, it's what it's not even mid anymore it's late november yeah uh traditionally right about thanksgiving time mm -hmm. is when that's going to start happening you're any day now there's going to be a kingdom sighting at some store now it could be one of those cases where someone finds them and a store won't let them buy <laughs> because of i know that's something. that's gonna happen but these things are they're in the warehouses they're be they're on the trucks you know they're out there somewhere um when we did the unboxing, you know, we were, I think Hasbro said we were about six to eight weeks out from these, you know, uh, first getting sighted. Now, I don't want everyone to think in six to eight weeks, you're going to find them on every shelf, every Target, every Walmart. That's not how it usually happens. Usually some small group of intrepid fans has a sighting at some not too, <laughs> not too heavily trafficked Target. And all of a sudden, everyone goes crazy, you know, hitting brick yeah. seek and running the targets looking for these things. I know I've done that. I, uh, I was at Target this morning, but I didn't <laughs> I didn't think to look, but I, I definitely didn't see anything. You know, like I looked I looked in the toy section, um, but I didn't see it. So, I mean, well, I looked at the Transformers, nothing. And then I, when I got home, that's when I had the email from Amazon. Yeah, you got you, well, you've got wave two and three of Earthrise right now that are starting to get yeah. better distribution than they were before. Uh, three has been cited at um, uh, a target uh, wave two, which kind of was the orphaned wave. It just kind of didn't happen when it was supposed to. All of a sudden, it's like a dam burst. And now they're appearing at, of all places, Aldi supermarkets. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I myself saw them at Walmart two days ago out here oh, wow. in Jersey. So I, I need to go get a blue streak. Is <laughs> oh, yeah. And Blue Streak, the Walgreens exclusive that everybody's hunting for. So popular, Walgreens took down his online listing because they were out of stock. Oh, man. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a few of those that I I think I'd like to get, you know, like overall. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Luminous had a question for you. Does Ben have any stories about the late Larry Dottilio, the, the, the Beast Wars writer? Larry was uh, one of the story editors along with Bob Ford on Beast Wars. And uh, yeah, I, I what I loved about Larry uh, was how forward he was about everything. Um, uh, I, I, I remember <laughs> uh, when we were at BotCon one year, um, you know, this is when Beast Wars first started and the connections to Generation 1 were just coming, you know, in, in to be revealed. And uh, a fan asked him during the panel, you know, what about the quintessons? And his first response was, F the quintessons. <laughs> <laughs> it was something along those lines. It was just so, uh, it was humorous, but it was uh, it was very genuine. And that's one mm -hmm. thing I loved about Larry is how genuine he was and how he did, he, years after the Beast Wars era, I'll call it, we stayed in touch. We we wrote to each other about what was going on in each other's lives. I, I up until his unfortunate passing, I was still getting a Christmas card from him every year. I I, I really, um, I really miss him. Uh, he he was he was a great guy to talk to, mm -hmm. and um, anyone who's ever gotten to know him, I think, was a very fortunate person. That's cool, man. So, let's take a look. Yes, let's do it. We're, and I said, what I'm gonna do, if everybody wants to follow along, we're gonna. So I hope I did I, these in size order. <laughs> I tried to. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna look at what you did, and then you know what? I'll I'll bring you up closer. Okay. And we'll look at the actual figures. Sure. At the end, let's go through like what you your experience first. Okay. Sure. So this is the the article. I'm just gonna scroll down. And what's funny is one of uh, uh, another reviewer friend Stevens Toy Reviews actually sent me this pic earlier, and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait for Kingdom. I was like, hey, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking about that tonight. So these are very cool. This is this is the article, guys. So uh, check it out. The link is in the chat. And we're going to go. We're going straight down here because he, this is a nice feature, by the way. I, I like this, Ben. Oh, I'm glad. I, I, I have my friend uh, Dave to thank for that. He helped set that up. He set up the backbone of my site. I don't take any credit. I just had a vision. He made it happen. Very cool. So. 
tell us how this all came to be this and what this, right. what happened here. So starting about two years ago, uh, this is the third unboxing that I've been involved in. About two years ago uh, at New York Comic Con, which, as you know, would have happened around this time of year, mm -hmm. um, Hasbro would set up an off-site press event uh, for Transformers uh, fan media. And that means websites, YouTube channels, uh, and any group that they feel is influential in the Transformers com fan community. And the very first one, we met them at kind of like one of these WeWork type conference rooms uh, mm -hmm. off-site from New York Comic Con. And we had never done anything like this before. So we, we didn't know what to expect. And they said, well, what you're going to do today is we're going to give you all these toys to crack open. And we want your first impressions. We want you to write about what you think. And this was Siege. That, that was the very first one. So they wanted us to experience Siege. And they uh, they broke them all out. And what's great is they had cases, right? So there were at least 10, 12 people in the room. So each of us basically got a toy to, to play with uh, for the most part. Um, some more than others. Like they didn't have quite enough deluxes for all of us. So we mm -hmm. had to like keep swapping them around. Uh, but it was fun because these things were going to be on shelf for six to eight weeks minimum, right? Just like these kingdom figures. Mm -hmm. And it was also a great chance because you had designers in the room, right? And marketers. So you could look at a toy and go, wait a minute, this thing you did on this toy, why did you do that? And how often do you have the chance to like ask the guy who designed the toy, <laughs> you know, right there and then holding the toy in your hand saying, why did you do this thing? And it also gave the designers a chance to explain to us uh, what the intent of the toys were, what the what the gimmick was, and so on. So that was the very first one. However, the big difference between the first one and last year's and this year's is we didn't get to keep the toys. So we played with the toys, they threw them all back in a box, thanked us for showing up, and we left. And then last year, also at New York Comic Con, then they did um, not Earthrise. I was hoping it would be Earthrise, but it was actually the very last wave of Siege. So Snapdragon and all those. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, not, I'm sorry, Ape Face uh, mm -hmm. and, and those figures. So once again, they broke them out. They put them at the table. Now, by this point, we're thinking, all right, we know what the deal is. We're going to get to ask the designer questions and stuff. We did all that. And then at the very end, we're all getting up ready to leave. And they said, you know what, guys? We decided you get to keep the toys. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> and honestly, we were all, I mean, if you ever wanted to see a room full of like 40-something <laughs> folks, like fans just shocked, like, like frozen for five seconds. That was it. Because... I think, at least in my mind, for a second, I thought, are they messing with us? <laughs> are they, are they going to go, just kidding, get out of here? <laughs> but, but no, they, you know, they, they, they didn't. I, and I can tell you, I don't think it was planned that way because they didn't have anything for us to carry out the toys in. Mm -hmm. And usually when Hasbro gives away things, they're very good about getting goodie bags put right. together and stuff like that. So they had to, like, ask the WeWork people, do you guys have, like, a garbage bag these guys can put everything in? <laughs> so we there we were a whole bunch of fans walking out of this event with garbage bags full of siege toys that's amazing uh but this time they actually did bring enough so that everybody was able to get one in hand mm -hmm. so i was very fortunate uh in that respect and uh and again uh this year okay so now we're in lockdown there right. was no new york comic con Right. Uh, you know, at the Javits, what do we do? No one's flying anywhere uh, for these type of events. So uh, several weeks ago, they said, OK, we're going to do a virtual unboxing. We're going to do this all online. So we've got to get these toys shipped to you first. We've got to confirm you got them. <laughs> and then on a specific day, we did a Zoom call. And literally, they they told us like what order to open the toys. And they would say, OK, now open Optimus Prime. Now open Rat Trap. And it was a very similar structure in the sense that we still got to ask the designers, mm -hmm. what were you thinking when you did this? Can you explain this? And the designers got to tell us some interesting things about the designs, which we'll go through you know, when we get to the sure. individual figures. Um, so you can imagine, like, how kind of mind blowing it is to get a box like the one you have up on the screen right now, right? Mm -hmm. It says Hasbro on the side, you open it and it's toys that, you know, most fans aren't going to have for over a month. It's, it's crazy. And I'll tell you, I've been doing this a long time. And to this day, there's part of my mind, which still says, this isn't real. Yeah. <laughs> like, this can't be real. Right. I hear you, man. It's like when you, <laughs> you know, it doesn't happen often for me, but like when it does and you get something like that, it's just like, you know, like, it's, it's just, it's just awesome. Like, you know, God bless Diamond, man. Diamond <laughs> is always like sending me stuff. And, you know, I, I'm so glad they got into like Kaiju stuff in the last few years because yep. it's been like, like a perfect, <laughs> like relationship since then. 
<laughs> and it's just amazing when they send stuff it's like they send stuff and it's just like giant box just like sitting <laughs> on your porch and it's like what this is amazing uh so yeah it's oh it's getting you know toys in the mail that you didn't pay for is <laughs> and, 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 getting toys you do pay for is awesome you know yeah. but when it's like you know here free toys it's, it's just well, incredible you gotta think these people like they got jobs to do, right? They got they got things to do, right? Outside of this, they got to make the toys, and they took the time to put together these packages for us, right? Uh, to send out, and it it really humbles you a lot, mm -hmm. you know. It, it makes you feel like, oh wow, okay, I gotta, you know, really go the extra mile here mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, to be a good fan citizen, if you will. Yeah. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, be professional, be polite. You can criticize, but do it in such a way that's constructive, yeah. you know, and, and that's where I feel, you know, a lot of my job as a reviewer comes in. Definitely, man. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I, I feel that is being a professional, you know, is, you know, like, and, you know, carrying yourself that way and just putting forth that respect, you know, towards the product you are reviewing. I mean, whether you're reviewing something that, you bought or not, you know, it's, you should always carry yourself the same way. You know, somebody made this, somebody yep. put like so much effort into this toy, you know, that like, I, you know, as, as, you know, a, a comic creator, like I know like how much effort just goes into a comic, you know, and it's the same mm -hmm. thing. Like it runs, you know, parallel with each other. And, you know, so I, I get it, like, and going into this, like, trying to do this, like, I was just like, man, I never want to get too crazy about, yep. uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you got to respect what goes into it, you know? Yep. And the only time I, I don't is when I I see stuff that are, like, not that I don't, but, like, I, I still try to talk about it very, like, professionally, is, you know, you see something that really was very easy to prevent, you know, yeah. in your eyes. So you have to question stuff like that, but you know, I understand completely, you know, and that's how, you know, that's how you progress into like getting the respect that, you know, someone like yourself has man mm -hmm. from a, a huge company like Hasbro. Um, yeah, you as well, man. I, I'm, yeah. I was happy to hear about the monopoly thing. I know that. Well, <laughs> I mean, I have you to thank for that, sir. Uh, originally, you know, you hooked me up, with the, the proper people to talk to. So, and, you know, just treat them with respect and eventually yeah. something good happens, you good know? So, happen. so yeah, that Monopoly, that was fun. Uh, that was really fun. So here's the, the, you know, the first wave out of the package here, out of the box, the Hasbro box. And uh, let's break down uh, who do we have here. All right. So let's, uh, let's go for the back row forward then. Uh-huh. Um, I believe, and the picture's a little small on my screen, but basically what I did was I shoved all the big figures into the backs so of Leader Class and Voyager. So mm -hmm. uh, with Leader Class, you have a repack of Earthrise Optimus Prime in Kingdom uh, packaging, oh, which okay. I did not open because the box is so freaking gorgeous. I already <laughs> have my Earthrise Optimus open. I'm going to leave it in there. Uh, then you have the Leader Class Megatron, who mm -hmm. is, as far as I'm concerned, like the centerpiece of this whole set. Mm -hmm. uh, Voyager Class Optimus Primal, who is number two in my absolute love category in this wave. Uh, Voyager Class Cyclonus who is uh, based on his animated appearance in, okay. in the G1 cartoon. And then the middle row are the deluxes. Um, you have uh, Paleotrex, who's the fossilizer you mentioned earlier. He's kind of like a bunch of dinosaur bones uh, who, become, who becomes a robot and weapons. Mm -hmm. You have Cheetor. So you're, I know you're going to have to <laughs> get your son one of those. Yeah. Um, and then Black Arachnia. And, um, oh, I'm forgetting who the fourth one was. Oh, Warpath. Uh, who is based on uh, the also kind of a, a, a the based on the G1 cartoon, but with amped up details, and we'll talk more about him in detail okay. later. Then the front row, the carded figures you see there, are uh, what's a new class called the Core class. Now, for for those who may remember the Legends class from years ago, it was kind of their ten dollar price point, uh, small figures. They did a lot of the mini bots and Insecticons and figures like that in that scale. Uh, I guess. You know, from a financial standpoint, making figures in that size, that bulk, uh, that much plastic, et cetera, is not 
quite as uh, doable anymore. So what they did was they created this class, which is slightly smaller. It's almost oh, in okay. between the old Legends class from like 10, 15 years ago, which was tiny. It was like, you know, that. Uh, and the Legends class from, say, three, four years ago. This is kind of an in-between middle ground. But there's something really nice about the two, which, again, we'll go to through it in the individual figures. Uh, here's uh, where we have Vertebrake, who uh, is the one you got the email about, Sal, uh, Optimus Prime, and Rat Trap. OK. Is Vertebrake a fossilizer too, no? Or is he not? He is. He is. Uh, okay. he's, he's kind of a fossilizer light, because okay. his weapon can only really be used by other core class figures. But oh, it looks great. OK. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So this so is uh, part of the package. Why take a picture of this? Now, this. For those longtime fans of Transformers or those who are very familiar with Beast Wars, you'll recognize what it, this is inspired by. The old Beast Wars packaging had a gigantic eye in the background, wow. on the back of cards, on the box. So they wanted to pay homage to that. This is actually on the insert flap of the Voyager and Leader class boxes. Huh. Now, here's the great part about this thing. This is not just a reprint of the old eye. This is a recreation, but they changed something. If you look at the pupil very carefully, that's not just a pupil. That is the arc crashing. I was going to say, that looks like... Behind it. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> is cool. Off. That is and, very, very cool. Yeah, fans of the show might recall the arc played a very big role in the end of season two season uh, and season three of the show. So uh, having the arc there is very appropriate. That is awesome. That is very nice. So you have right. core class Optimus. That's right. So that's the back of the package. And uh, we can go to the front, uh, to, you know, regular carded figure. But when we get to the actual toy pictures now, here's the thing about this size class. You would think that because it's smaller, they're going to make things cheaper. They're going to cheap out on deco and so on. What I was very impressed by with this figure, and we'll see this even more in the robot mode, is it has a lot of detail, a lot of sculpted detail. And the silhouette is really awesome. If you look that's at that really silhouette, cool. that's like a masterpiece silhouette. That's kind of like the power of the Prime's leader class Optimus mm. Prime in terms of detailing. Uh, Deco, he's got plenty of Deco. I can't say he looks too nope. clean. Could he Could he have more? Sure. I, my opinion, a figure can always have more Deco. Yeah, of course. But I think for what he is, and uh, he's got about 11 points of articulation, mm -hmm. uh, he, he looks fantastic in my opinion. Now, the others are obviously to be in scale. What is the point? I, I mean, I know the point, <laughs> but like, just to, uh, like every, you know, just to let everyone know, what would be the point of having Optimus in the scale? Right. So uh, there's kind of a phrase that gets batted around uh, when, I, when when I talk to Hasbro about toys at Toy Fair or whatever, uh, and that's you know, every kid should have an opportunity to have an Optimus Prime, right? Mm -hmm. And does every kid have to pay fifty dollars to get an Optimus Prime or thirty dollars to get an Optimus Prime? What if a kid just wants to pay, how rather the parent pay ten dollars? and get them a good Optimus Prime figure. Now, there are $10 Optimus Prime figures at places like Family Dollar and so yeah. on from the Authentics <laughs> line. They're not anywhere near the detail <laughs> right. side of this figure. So, you know, does, doesn't, does you know, every kid deserve to have- I agree. Uh, an, an Optimus Prime that looks good, transforms in a fairly complex manner. And that's the point of including an Optimus Prime here. Now, I'll tell you, for me, as, as a fan going back to 84, I loved any Transformer that I could just toss in my backpack and take to school. And I think this this fits that bill perfectly. You can just slip it in the small pocket of your backpack or into your pocket, your coat pocket, and you can play with your friends at school, you know, with their Transformers. It, you know, not everyone's going to want to try to jam like, you know, a commander class figure or mm -hmm. leader class figure into their backpack. <laughs> it's a good looking little figure. You know, I didn't pre-order this, but it might be one I uh, I pick up if I see I'll tell it you what, store. this is what I say in my reviews oftentimes. For us adult collectors, you know what this is? This is what I call a great desk bot. Yeah. You want to just have it it's off the Something to fiddle with. Work. Yep, exactly. Now, I know right now most of us are working virtually except for, mm -hmm. you know, service workers and first res first responders. All of you, thank you for all your work. I can't imagine what you're going through. Me, I'm, I'm, I'm a desk jockey, so <laughs> I sit at a desk all day. And at work, I have a bunch of tiny little figures, mm -hmm. you know, or smaller little transformers because, you know, do you really want to leave a $50 figure on your desk at work? Probably not. Yeah. May not be there the next time you show up, you know, but a little figure like this, why not? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Definitely. Oh, I hear somebody. 
Yeah, there he uh. is. <laughs> All right. So now we have Rat Trap. Rat who Trap. I think I, I can easily say is a fan favorite character from Beast Wars. Uh, most folks loved Rat Trap, loved his attitude. Um, and what they did was, you know, it, it works because you got to figure if we're going to do things in scale, Rat Trap is one of the smallest members of the Maximal team. Sure. So making the rat in the core class works out perfectly. Um, they The sculpt, okay, I'm going to be honest. I love the robot mode sculpt. I think they just nailed the robot mode. Um, but the, the beast mode, unfortunately, he suffers a little bit because of all the panel lines. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure how in this size class and in this price, you could have avoided that. Um, so given that, what I will compliment is I love the organic details. And it's been so long since Transformers in the main line have had organic details like this that it's just great to see again. You know, I look at the fur, the claws, uh, his little cute mouse nose, you yeah. know. I love stuff like that. Um, so, so you know, take the good with the bad. Yes, lots of panel lines, but he's adorable. I yeah, think. you know, but the thing for me personally, like, it's weird because I... When it comes to like some of the more like like Dinobots or whatever, I end up t tending to love the the Dino modes more. <laughs> but yeah. but for some reason, the Beast Wars characters, I just love seeing them in robot mode because I mm -hmm. love the organic with the robot stuff. Yeah. Like like I just love the combo. Like I love the rat head on his chest. You know, like <laughs> I do. I, and it's just like it's always been suit like a really super cool combo you know um so for me the robot modes always stand out and i'm glad rat trap looks really cool it does look also, really awesome i like I, I like how the back looks it's weird but i like it it's also a great sci-fi concept right because you know for those not in the know about beast wars when the when the beast wars characters transform into beasts they are uh, they have basically an organic shell around them mm -hmm. so they are or rather the organics are integrated into their systems so um having those bits in their robot mode is is an interesting concept because they're not purely mechanical anymore they're partly organic and that mm -hmm. is a way that they separated themselves back in the 90s from traditional transformers yeah that's really cool all right, so, so Vertebrae. Here we have uh, our first uh, new character in the core class is Vertebrae. Uh, this is a fossilizer, and there is actually an acronym. You can see it <laughs> on, on my report, uh, what the acronym stands for. Um, but essentially, the idea is that these Transformers become uh, dinosaur skeletons and then can break out into weaponry. I to love be it. By <laughs> other characters. Uh, Vertebrae kind of like... Hey, he's kind of half that concept because he really is just a robot to beast, and then his tail pops off and can be handled by, say, Rat Trap. Right? I, I love. I'm so, loving this art, by the way. Like oh, just art. like across the board, across the board, it's it's awesome. But oh yeah, this one is so awesome. During like, the unboxing, I love that. Um, everyone kept begging Hasbro to create a coffee table book of the art from the last yeah. few years because it's been extraordinary. Um, so this is a Predacon. Uh, it's a bad guy. Uh, but interestingly enough, and someone asked this on the unboxing, this is a she, oh. <laughs> so, according to Hasbro. So someone just outright asked, is this a he or a she? And Hasbro kind of half answered, but they did lean to she. And I like okay. that because I, I like having, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, female characters in non-traditional forms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, past examples like Beast Machine Striker was an example of a big, bulky character who, you know, traditionally, if I asked you to gender that character, you'd probably just say male. But turns out she was a female. She was just a very big, bulky, powerful female, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is cool. Um, so that was unexpected. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool with this, this guy is it's not a G1 guy in a new form. This is a wholly original character, so they can oh, I do like that. whatever cool. they wanted. I really like the head like sculpt. It's really cool. Yes, exactly. And actually, you're not the only person to point that out. Quite a few people on the unboxing were complimenting this head sculpt. It's very different than what we've been seeing because most of what we've been seeing is G1 guys with new heads. It's very Mad Max <laughs> in a way. Like it looks like it has like goggles and like that, yeah. like like kind of like headgear. Um, no, it's and, cool. And, and, you know and the colors about? are like that too, honestly. The colors of the character seems very Mad Max-ish. Um, 
it doesn't really come through in this photo and unfortunately even the official photos it's hard to see he's he looks black just mm -hmm. pure black he's actually kind of tones of brown there's actually two tones of very dark brown yeah. happening here um they they're a little bit more easy to see depending on the lighting you have him in like if you have him in sunlight i think you could see it more uh she, the other thing that's interesting about her is this is a great shot if you look at the back you see all those vertebra and and those bones and those lines and everything there's it's almost like a, a, a hr eager esque yeah. you know, alien look to, to this figure uh it, it makes it it makes her extra creepy um but what was interesting is and in when you get the figure cell you'll, you'll notice this is uh you'll the feel of the plastic it's actually uh, a softer plastic oh, and the reason they had to do that was because of all those lines there hmm. if you you can kind of see from the tail weapon they're kind of thin kind of sharp looking if they had done that with hard plastic it would be too brittle and it would just hmm. shatter so they had to do it with softer plastic to maintain the structural integrity of the figure this looks really cool yeah, it's a Draco Rex, I believe, which I think is ah. a Pachycephalosaurus uh, variant. I think some scientists think it's just a basically a baby Pachycephalosaurus, but you know, I I love the look of the skull. That um, looks amazing with the, with the horns coming out in the back and the little spikes on on the nose. It, it's just a beautiful piece, and yeah, you know, I, I have they, right now, have they done going. dinosaur bones at all in the Transformers before? No, the uh, the closest fans have ever come to having something like this is an old line called the Dinosaurs. Uh, by Bandai back in oh, the yeah, day. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember the dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting thing is those were all made of translucent plastics painted, right? And they they had the sharp edges of the dinosaur bones and stuff. And because of that, they could be pretty fragile if you messed around with them too much. So I think Hasbro made the right call in kind of going a little softer on the plastics. I like it. I mean, I, the idea that they become like weapons and armor, uh, you know, for the Beast Wars characters is just... Cool. I mean, I think that's awesome. Like, really. Yep. Oh, I mean, it could be for any character, really. But, like, yep. I feel like they really belong with the Beast Wars characters. They just blend right into that, you it's know. It's a fun theme. Yeah, it is. It really is. And they look really good. I love, I, so far, I love the deco of this one. It's really cool. Can't wait to get it in hand. So, you know, hopefully. Soon. Tuesday. Soon it's going to happen, right? <laughs> yeah, Tuesday, apparently. Awesome. So, we'll see. We'll see if anything else starts trickling out. Um, you know, I, I feel like probably, I mean, if, if this <laughs> one's coming, you know, we'll, we'll see what else is going to be there, but I didn't pre-order everything. So, you know, it's going to have to be, I'm going to have to find some, um, you know, when these pre-orders dropped, I was still like coming, you know, back into a lot of pre-orders. So I didn't want to like go crazy with the pre-orders. So, you know, there was just a handful of them. Like I didn't pre-order Black Arachnia here. So um first apologies to 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 your viewers i did get pictures of black arachne in box i did not get to upload her pictures like the the quickie pictures i took like a vertebrae so but i could speak to her because i did sit down and transform her okay. um first of all the robot mode they nailed it like she looks like she just jumped off the screen you know from the cartoon uh which is pretty extraordinary because the there we turn go. reminds me of that yours. <laughs> exactly um uh, to turn a humanoid form and into a spider, <laughs> which it's like a ball and a ball and then a bunch of legs. It, it was quite the transformation challenge. And I will tell you, you may think from this picture here that you know how that robot becomes that spider. Trust me, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do want to get this one for sure. That spider looks awesome. Yeah, she she's an engineering marvel uh in my opinion that that's that's the best i could say the only critique i have of the figure and this is a minor one if they want it to be 100 percent animation accurate her legs should be painted gold or yellow but okay. that's it that's my only complaint other than that she's a fantastic figure well what color are her legs now they look yellow they're more uh, yellow no, the spider legs oh the spider, the spider legs. legs oh, oh yeah. gotcha gotcha yeah all right, here we, here we here's your son's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he's got his own. He's good. He's got his own. <laughs> like I got, I still, I need, I don't have a cheetor here, so I, I need a cheetor in my collection. Um, this will be so, yours then. Yeah. Uh, so cheetor is uh, based on the appearance he had in the first uh, season and a half of, mm -hmm. of the show, uh, season and a quarter. Um, this was the form he first took on on Earth, and what they did was. Um, it passed Cheetor Toys, except for Masterpiece, of course, and maybe the Universe one will give that 
you know, a little bit of uh, latitude. But the the old Beast Wars toys, it was basically a very bulky cat yeah. <laughs> becoming a kind of bulky robot. <laughs> and it, hey, I love my Beast Wars cheater, so I have no problem with that. For the time, they did the best they could. Uh, but in this era, what they wanted to do was create a very lithe and fast looking cheetah, a true cheetah form uh, that could transform into a show accurate cheetor. Now, the, the great thing to note is when they started the design of this, you could tell they did not design this thinking now we're going to repaint it into Tigertron later, right? It's not a cheetah can be a tiger, which is what they did with the old Beast Wars line. Um, instead, uh, Tigertron, uh, I think the rumors are that he'll be a Voyager class. Uh, okay. He's been seen on some of the promotional artwork, so everyone's kind of assuming he's coming. Uh, but based on that promotional artwork, he doesn't look like this, and that's important. So this was made to be Cheetor, and that is a huge deal. Uh, the Beast mode and, and the robot modes really do for the most part look like they jumped off uh the, the, that the head screen. sculpt is awesome yeah that's perfect um, uh, the the cheetah head on his chest looks great mm -hmm. um and you know you can see how his cheetah legs cross on the back there uh similar to how they did on the tv show uh the only thing that's hugely different and th Woo! this yeah look at that look at that look how thin he is he you know and he's got like a real life cheetah he's got that kind of bulk on the upper body, but then as you go towards the back, um, it becomes thinner. And I love that. I, I think it looks spectacular. Um, the only unfortunate thing is uh, they gave him uh, the whip weapon made out of his tail, which is really from Transmetal Cheetor. Uh. Um, the, the original Cheetor had a gun, which he used okay. to show in. In the original toy, it was actually formed from his guts. So when you popped huh. it off, it actually had like intestine and organ details sculpted into it. So a lot of people called that his gut gun. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I did so, not realize that. That's interesting. <laughs> it was a crazy time. Uh, so what folks on the unboxing chat suggested to Hasbro was if they do another one of those accessory packs, like the one they just released a couple months ago, uh, Cheetos gut gun should be one of those accessories. So <laughs> hopefully we'll get it at some point in the future. That's amazing. I, I love how this looks. I mean, Cheetor's colors, the blue and the yellow, they just look so good. Yeah, I would not mind if in the future they did a variant, maybe for like a Netflix series or whatever version, where it's metallic blue, like on the show, and he has more gold accents gotcha. in robot mode. Um, but hey, you know, you wasn't know they're going to redeco him. Wasn't the, if I remember correctly, wasn't the proto picks more metallic? I think so. But you know what's hard to say nowadays is, was it metallic or was that just how the lighting made it look? That's <laughs> or a tough one. Did they yeah. really blast that one out? Yeah. And yeah, keep in mind, possible. a lot of the stuff we see in photos, it's all like hand-painted protos that just, right. we need no, a photography. Definitely. Paint it up really quick. Mm -hmm. It may not be the final. Yeah. I still think it looks good. You know, like if, yeah, I think I remember those being metallic, but yeah, I, exactly what you're saying. It's not final ever, you know? It's not final till it's final. Right, and, and and that's why it's great to see these, right, in hand, like, oh, this is what they actually meant to do. So here's the other fossilizer, All right. the, uh, the bigger one. So here we have uh, Paleo Tracks, who I have right here. Uh, Very cool. Let's, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's, bring, let's, let's, let's bring that, uh, let's bring, let me, bring you. Let me open up his owl. Oh, okay, in the, oh, in the lighting, right. that looks haunting. <laughs> But you can see how, like, if you're, if you like going to your local natural history museum or what have you, I mean, look at this guy. Look at that. That's look awesome. At that detail, you know? So anyway, we could go to the photos. I just wanted to show him up close really quick. Luminous uh, asks, how, how long, long it, how, how is cheetah's cheetah form? form? Yeah. That is a good question. Uh, don't have him in cheetah mode at the moment, but I would say if you include the tail, probably four to 4.5 to 5 inches. That's a guess. But thank you for bringing that up, because when I review him, I will make it a point to measure it. Cool. So you're free and clear to review everything now. I, I actually oh, yeah. wanted to ask you that, so I'm glad you brought that up. Cool. Because yep. uh, yeah, I don't know if there's like, you know, sometimes they... Embargo. Yeah. The embargo, um, yeah. Th no, thank you for asking. Believe me, we wouldn't be having this conversation if I wasn't allowed. Oh, sure, sure. Um, no, but I'm saying, just, you, know, <laughs> you know, sometimes you're allowed to do one thing and maybe not yeah. another, you know. 
Uh, my plan is in the next two to three weeks, I, I want to go through all of these I, as much as work will allow me. <laughs> I'm going to go through every single one and try to start reviewing. I actually started writing the first review tonight bef right before this podcast so or, or this cast. So uh, I'm on it. Cool. All, all right, right. So let's so talk about this guy. Here. This is what I would call the true fossilizer, right? Vertebrake is kind of like the fossilizer light. Sure. This is the one that actually has a beast mode or skeleton mode, a robot mode, which is funky. I mean, look how that weird is this guy so is. not Transformers, <laughs> um, but I love it. It's it's so cool. He's he's, he's so like creepy. He he's like if you saw him, and and uh, you know you wouldn't want to fight this guy. He, look he at that guy. Insane. He's got. A, I love that he has a face inside of a face. Yes. So this is an Easter egg, actually, uh, for longtime Beast Wars fans. Now, the original Optimus Primal Ultra Class figure, the Gorilla one in, in the 90s, one of his weapons was a mace. And the, the ball of the mace was actually a head with spikes on it. And that is, is what you were looking yeah. at here. This design is based on that. Oh, man. That's so cool. And he breaks apart. And you can see one of his arms becomes an axe. Um, uh, you can, uh, I have a photo of Cyclonus. He, oh my God, go. that's cool. So you see, and he could attach these claws to his back and they can like slash at enemies. It's it's so savage, you know, compared to just hooking up like cannons on your back like they did in Siege. Uh, and I think it fits the theme perfectly. There he is. But you know what I also love is, first of all, the deco on this guy is great. I love how the browns fade into each other at some parts. Uh, like, look at the skull, look at the with lower jaw hinges. That that spray is not something they do a lot on Transformers. So to see that here is beautiful. They used to do it a lot more in the 90s, but they kind of got away from that practice over the last 20 years. And the other thing that's cool is, hey, I I don't know about you, Sal, you know, we're, we're both from New York. So one of my favorite things to do as a kid was go to the Museum of Natural History mm -hmm. and hang out in the dinosaur area. And yeah. This just brings that back to me. Oh, it's yeah. I mean, like... I finally I got to take my son last year, last summer. Uh, and boy, am I glad we did that last summer <laughs> in L.A. Because uh, we haven't done anything this year, um, mm -hmm. you know, like so. But that was really, really cool. And, you know, Did I you had to wait. He loved it. But I, I also <laughs> had to wait. You know, he was, you know, till he was a little bit older. So he was five yeah. last year, you know, and I just felt like I didn't want to bring him before that because I feel like he yeah. wasn't going to appreciate it as much sure, sure. you know but um he loved it you know it was super super cool uh i'm glad we got to do that and yeah like i think he's gonna get a kick out of these because uh we have a i got him like not a whole set but like like uh, about four or so of the uh, this japanese brand called remix remix mm -hmm. and they're just articulated dinosaur bones <laughs> uh, no they're it's re-meant actually re -meant. okay uh, and uh, th they're awesome, but unfortunately I gave it to him too early on. And like, there are like, they're scattered in pieces in toy boxes because they're all like ball joints, you know? So, uh, but he does like it a lot. So I think he's going to get a, a real kick out of these two. This you meant well. So I did. I did. I, you know, I was like, look at this. None of your friends are going to have these. <laughs> it's true. So, uh, you know, as you can see on the tail, especially, we have more of that kind of a uh, really intricate sculpting, right, for each of the vertebra. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad they didn't cheap out on that. You know, you, if you like hold it, you can really just feel every every little detail that's worked in there. Uh, so, yeah, they may be skeletons, but they're really highly detailed skeletons. Yeah, that's beautiful. Really nicely painted. Yeah, I was actually surprised. I didn't expect them to look that good. This guy's cool. He's going to be interesting to to mess around with. I mean, besides, you know, between the totally creepy robot mode and <laughs> this really, really... The, the cool thing about it uh, is, and I felt like that with uh, Vertebrake too, like, in this, like, dino skeleton mode, like, you really... You don't see the robot stuff a lot. Am well, I r right? No, like, I, I, there's maybe a chest plate that peeks out at the bottom on his chest and that's it. That's pretty but, great. You know, and I think part of the way they, they managed to succeed with that is making the, 
uh, robot mode so crazy looking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's not a traditional, you know, square on rectangle on oval type transformers design, and and that lends itself to this type of beast. And I want them to push design more in this direction because I think it frees their imagination to do interesting things. Yeah. Uh, Legendary Godzilla Jr. says this is really interesting. I love Transformers. We do too. We do too. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's good to see Godzilla fans loving Transformers. You know, um, they, I see like I I comment on this a lot on my channel, but like I'm always telling people there's there's a huge world of toys out there, and it's so much fun to put stuff together. You know, uh, especially when you get cool stuff like this. So like. This is awesome. That's why I want to feature a lot of these guys on the channel because I feel like it'll bring a lot of folks. It could bring a lot of folks into Transformers that never have before. So it should be awesome. Uh, I hope. Ghost says, so is Generation still happening or is All Kingdom this and next year? Still waiting well, for the Armada Optimus Prime. These are good questions. Um, Generation, this is Generations. Yeah. So this is the third chapter in the War for Cybertron Generations uh, series. And then after that, I guarantee you Generations will keep going. It is one of their primary money makers right now. Um, a lot of the fandom that buys Transformers, um, you know, aside from the kids, you notice they segmented things now, right? They have us 40-somethings, 30-somethings who buy Generations. They know we are a significant audience. This isn't like... 25 years ago when we only made up 10% of the buying population. Mm -hmm. That number is much higher now. And I think if you look at a lot of the lines they've been creating, it's clearly catered to people like us yeah. uh, who grew up with G1 in the 80s. Um, in terms of that Armada Optus Prime, we did ask about it on the call. Hasbro did not really have any knowledge about it. I We actually had to kind of remind them it existed. So we... we we as a collective kind of nudge them towards, hey, it'd be great if you guys looked into seeing what that could come out. <laughs> because, mm -hmm. and, and for those not in, not in the know, what is being referred to here is there was a prototype or a gray model mm -hmm. of an Optimus Prime from the Armada series um, shown, I think a year or two ago at a, a, a toy show in Japan. And it, they just put it there. Like they, they didn't explain why it was there. They mm -hmm. didn't tell us a release date or anything they That's just right. are yeah it, it's it's an armada Optimus prime we're going to entice you with and they never showed it again i know i remember that again so um i too really hope that comes out because i think that version of optimus prime has potential to be a really amazing action figure is but they they are doing stuff now where they're going back and you know releasing different things from different lines like yep. there's the anim you know the animated stuff that's coming and there's various things that they're doing. Uh, so it could come and say, you know, like in some form uh, for sure, you know, and, and you never know, like, you know, we could, the whole point of generations is here's a line that's like, you know, encompasses like all our generations of stuff in one kind of streamlined, similar design sense. Is, is that and a it's, proper it's, way? It's where these guys, are in the same wave. <laughs> right, you exactly, know? you know? So. so you never know what we're gonna see in Generations because it's everything. Before we continue, we'll uh, answer one more question. This is a, maybe a tough one. Tim asks, what's your favorite Transformer? Oh, I have so many answers to that question. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I'm gonna stick with the theme since we're going through Beast Wars stuff. My favorite Transformer in the Beast Wars era and for many years afterwards is Rhinox. Oh, um, wow. I, I love his forms. I, I love how he looks in both modes. I love his weapon. I think most of fandom loves his weapon, the chain gun of doom. Um, but I also love the idea that there's this big, tough guy. He was powerful, strong, you know, broad shoulder and everything. But he was also smart. He mm -hmm. was their mechanic. He, in a way, he was their scientist. You know, um, I love when a, a, a a character could break stereotypes and he's, he's not the big dumb strong guy right no he's the big guy who's strong and brilliant <laughs> which is uh really awesome and i loved his voice in the show as well so um for the beast era that was definitely my favorite in g1 when i was a kid i would have said bumblebee uh um, really yeah. but i think you know that was at the time this was like you know 10 year old ben <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think over the years, like one of my favorite characters, and it is partly because of my emotional attachment to the toys, Fortress Maximus. Oh, wow. Um, 
that is, in my opinion, one of the best toys Generation 1 ever put out. Uh, and I said this in my review of the uh, the Titan Master Fortress Maximus. You know what? Even you know, a couple decades later, with all the doodads they put into it, the original toy is still a better toy <laughs> than the modern version. And I also love the character, like how that gave us our first official Spike action figure back in the 80s. Uh, and I love the idea of a character who is a pacifist who just keeps getting forced into war situations. He's a natural leader. He can lead. He's good at it. But he really doesn't want to lead in a war. Mm. Uh, so there's interesting story uh, possibilities there, too, that were explored. And, you know, for a kid in the 80s, that was some heady stuff. Um, so, yeah, th I, I'll go with those two for now. Fort that's, Max that's and good. Uh, Rhinox. For, for myself, I'm a huge Optimus fan. I have been since I was a little kid. Like, he was, like, one of my heroes growing up. You know, so it's like I am a huge – like, I have – a lot of Optimus Primes. <laughs> like, there's a lot of Optimus Prime. I've featured them on this channel before. Um, and, you know, like, if I'm going to, like, boil it down to one toy, it, it's still MP10 for me. Like, it is just such a perfect, heroic Optimus Prime, you know? Um, and if I want to get even more specific, there was the uh, Year of the Horse variant. Yes. That I absolutely love. Like, I love that deco on Optimus, uh, on MP10 Optimus. It is so, so awesome. MP10 was just so solid, too. Re very it? solid. Very solid. I mean, they're still making yes. <laughs> MP10 <laughs> variants. Um, so it's, you know, that's a testament to that toy. Oh, one more question here. Ben, who would win? Optimus Primal or Leo Convoy? Convoy. Oh. If I'm going to get an, another MP, though, by the way, it's going to be that Leo Convoy. I'm, like, waiting for a sale somewhere. I know, right? <laughs> Boy, they're they're not cheap nowadays, are they? No, they're not. <laughs> um, I have to give it to Leo, Con Leo Convoy only because he has magical anime powers. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, you know, whereas Optimus Primal is almost a more grounded character in terms mm -hmm. of his abilities. Uh, but that said, um, it does. It also matters which version of Primal we're talking about. If we're talking Optimal Optimus with the Matrix in him or uh, Prime Spark in him, rather, uh, then I think it's a it's a it's a draw at that point because now in in Optimal Optimal Optimus with Prime Spark power up. Now he's got his own version of magical anime powers. Mm. <laughs> so, True. Yeah. I, 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 I love I, Optimal I, Optimus, by the way. That is a, such a cool design. And that toy that they did a few years back, it, I forget, I, what was that, Pyro the Primes now? Yeah, Blast. Yeah. That was a really good toy. Yep. That was and really a good one, yeah. Man, the original, you drop that thing on your toe, it's going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is I, solid. <laughs> let it, let's move forward here uh, to Warpath. All Who, right, Warpath. I I mean, like, I don't know a lot about Warpath. I'm going to admit it. But from all I've seen, I feel like, am I wrong to say that he's kind of a fan favorite? Yeah. <laughs> because, like, I always see a lot of love for Warpath. And it, <laughs> there must be, like, 7,000 third-party Warpaths out there. Like, it is insane. So the thing about Warpath is I... I attribute everything you just said to his cartoon portrayal. In the cartoon, he was just this super hyper enthusiastic warrior. And it's when weird, was... I don't remember him. So, <laughs> I, I really do, like my mind draws a blank to the character. It's so weird. The biggest thing you might remember, it maybe it'll ring a bell to you, is when he spoke. He had a very distinct speech pattern where he would keep inserting words like "pow" and "blam." into the middle of sentences for no apparent reason. <laughs> Man, that should ring a bell for me, but like that, it doesn't. And, and the voice acting on him was spot on. I, I, I gotta mean, go back he, and look. You either thought he was enthusiastic or insane. It's one or the <laughs> other, or, or both. Uh, but, and, but also, who doesn't love a robot tank? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, so uh, you gotta remember, at the time, most Autobots, right, were cars trucks things like that right they didn't have a lot of like warlike vehicle modes on their side whereas decepticons had you know warlike things from the very beginning right so warpath um having that alt form of a tank really helped that impression and what they did with this figure is they took the cartoon model and they basically 
exaggerated the details. They exaggerated the form a little bit. But the basic silhouette, the basic shape comes right from the G1 cartoon. Uh, and and as you can see, you could attach attach a blast effect to the end of his oh, cannon that's pretty there. Clean. Oh man, it, he looks so great. Uh, you can see the port on the back, so you could attach fossilizer bits if you wanted mm -hmm. to. Um, but it, the transformation again, like I said with Black Racket, you may think you know how this guy transforms exactly, but there's a lot more panel moving than I had expected. Mm -hmm. uh from this and i think he winds up looking amazing in both modes i really like how he looks like that looks awesome and so he doesn't come with this effect bar right this is uh no that separate. that effect is separate and fyi i extended the cam cannon out deliberately for exaggerated effect in this photo mm -hmm. the cannon actually does tuck in because right. in the animated uh model when he became a tank it was of course a long cannon but as a robot it was only kind of a, maybe the very end of the barrel sticking out of his chest yeah, it looks good. I, I'd say the one like thing I'd say about it is I feel like there should be some sort of like dirt on him a little bit or something. He feels very clean. I would love a black wash. Yeah, a little bit, right? Like I feel like it would make a because like here I see it a lot, like where it's just like it's very hard to make out some of the details. Yeah. So I think that would be um, you know just to pop it out a little bit. Yeah, I love washes because cool. they fill in those nooks and crannies yeah. and then all of a sudden it it just pops, right? Mm -hmm. But it looks good overall. Both shapes look great. And also keep in mind, we're probably going to get a redeco at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> Does look cool. So this guy is interesting. Now, as everybody knows, we have the Studio Series 86 movie figures coming out. This is like the hidden figure of that line in a right. different line. It's very interesting that they included him in this form exactly like this <laughs> here. So, you know, what, what's kind of cool about that, and I think you nailed it, Tal, is um, if you think about the segments of Transformers, Cyberverse, Studio Series, right? They only have so many slots that the retailer is going to give them on shelf, right, mm -hmm. per product. So they had to figure out a way to round out things and get the Cyclonus somewhere in generations, right? Uh, and and meanwhile, have him still be able to stand alongside those upcoming studio series. So I think this is a perfect compromise. You know, let's be real. Most people who pick this guy up, if they want him for the studio series, gang, they're not going to care about the box. They're not going to care what he's labeled as Kingdom or Studio Series or whatever. They're going to pop him out. They're going to put him on a shelf yeah. with their other Studio Definitely. Series 86 guys, and he's going to look amazing. Um, now, the interesting thing is he's actually a lighter lavender. Now, Cyclonus had different paint jobs over the years uh, in the cartoon, You know, they kind of, depending on the artist and the animation studio. But the G1 toy was also a darker purple, so the animation model was a little different than, well, very different than the G1 toy. So they kind of split the difference here. They kind of went with the lavender and the purples, the darker purples here and there. And I think he looks fantastic, but I oh, think man, he's also awesome. ripe for a redeco, you know, um, in, in the dark, G, more G1 toy colors. And that was brought up during the unboxing. Um, but... He, this guy, he's, he is a Voyager class, uh, for those wondering. So he's about seven-ish inches tall. Okay. Uh, I think he might be a tiny bit more given the bunny ears. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. this guy's transformation is so... It, it, it does not appear intuitive at first. Um, or, or No, reverse that. It looks intuitive at first. But there's a lot of little things happening that I didn't expect. And I was very, very happy with. And when... Um, I think uh, hopefully oh, the previews aren't showing, but hopefully. Oh, was that the last photo? Shoot. I think the rest of my photos, uh, did they not upload? Yeah, it's only up to this. All right. I'm going to have to double check. Sorry, folks. I do have more photos than this, and I will upload them. Actually, I should try to do that while you are <laughs> streaming. I can. I should be able to do that. So uh, I'll keep talking while I'm doing this. So the thing about Cyclonus is his vehicle mode, which actually... Um, you know what, Sal, if you go to the back of the box photo again, mm -hmm. I think we can show everyone. Um, if you look at his vehicle mode, see that long, giant nose mm -hmm. <laughs> that schnoz has got there or, or, or the cockpit? Uh, that 
part traditionally has been one of the hardest parts about cyclones to create. Now, in the original G1 toy, the way they did that was <laughs> they basically just made his head um, the cockpit, which is why you see that giant um, uh, that that giant uh, uh, bunny ear thing yeah. happening on his head. Oh, actually, Sal, I just look. You might want to reload because I'm checking, and the images are there. Okay, let's, let's let's give it a let me, let let's me give it a refresh. Check. Oh, you know what it is? This thing at the bottom, it's not showing them all, even though I loaded them. Apologies, everyone. Let's see if I could go for No, they're one. they're not appearing. Uh, let me see if you break out. Oh, yeah, no. Would that do it? This falls under the category of uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> While you're doing that, we got a question here. Who would win Optimus with the Matrix versus Godzilla? <laughs> Oh, now, Sal, you, I'm going to let you answer that one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to say Godzilla is going to win that. Um, <laughs> size does matter a little bit. Guys. I also think it largely depends on which Godzilla, right? Yeah, I true. mean, you know, come on, Roland Emmerich Godzilla. Yeah, he's oh, win. yeah. yeah he's <laughs> Hanna-Barbera Godzilla. Eh. <laughs> Why do you think the Beast Wars Kingdom Predacon Megatron has a sand belly? I'm, I'm still assuming getting it. that refers to the color, uh, the yellowish color oh. uh, on the belly. And I think that is, I, and it's been a few years since I've looked at it, but if you go back to the original Beast Wars toy, uh, uh, the Ultra Class Megatron, he did kind of have that green spray op, and I think he had a yellow spray op running under underneath, and I think they translated that over to the animation as well. Uh, it's been a while, so if I get one of those wrong, don't don't get all over me on it. But it is inspired by details from the original Beast Wars line, and just FYI, folks, it, it looks amazing. <laughs> so we're. We might as well talk. Well, we, you're talking about him, so yeah. Let's talk about Megatron here a little more, since uh, it's the at least your, your pick, your main pick is uh, showing here. Yep. So Megatron is, my opinion, the centerpiece of the entire first wave. Uh, his robot mode looks absolutely amazing. It is jumped right off the CGI show into your, you know, living room uh, in plastic form. Uh, he, he his head sculpt. The deco, everything is pure, you know, CG Beast Wars uh, Megatron. But like Warpath, they amped up the details. So if you look at, you know, he has a claw arm on his left arm. Mm -hmm. that you can see the fist in there, but then he's got all this mechanical detailing around it. Um, the chest, you know, the cuts are really deep. So you get some nice detail filler and they painted a lot of it. So um, he... Uh, let's see if I can. Oh yeah, why don't we just do that actually? So if you look at a lot of those cuts, hopefully my camera focuses. I mean, if you see a lot of those details, they look fantastic. Mm -hmm. And his head sculpt again. I don't know if it comes out on camera. You probably see a little dot on his forehead. That's a Predacon symbol. That's oh wow! Tampographed onto his forehead, just like he had in the show. And then here, you can see these little detail cuts that I was telling you about. And then you have. A claw weapon and this part is actually this is the end of the tail it's actually articulated now i'm hoping i can get this on camera look at the interior of the mouth focus look at the roof of the mouth and look at the tongue see those details in there yeah it's amazing and he's got a port in there so you could put a blast effect into his mouth because in robot mode he uses that as his cannon mm -hmm. um and uh, this figure is, it, it also feels really solid. Um, I weighed it. Um, I compared it against a leader class uh, Grimlock uh, from the last night, which came out a few years ago. Uh, this guy actually outweighs him by like 0.2 ounces. So wow. <laughs> pretty solid. And the transform, I needed the instructions on this one. The oh, transform yeah. was nuts because there are so many panels. I mean, if you look... <laughs> at the back here i'm not looking it's forward just, to that <laughs> but i gotta of, see them in both modes <laughs> like i just love both modes of that megatron so i'm definitely gonna have to grin and bear it but yeah man that looks <laughs> that looks so well, so good this is the criticism everyone's gonna have and it's a valid one in beast mode 
it, you can pose him like if you see that photo that I have on my page, looks good, static, right? The minute you want to start posing out the beast mode, you're going to break up the skin lines a little bit. So you can see that on his knees and mm -hmm. you can see that on his neck. So that is a valid criticism, but I'll be honest, I don't know how the heck you get this form without breaking those parts up. Yeah. Unless you you're to. paying 300 something dollars for a masterpiece. No, but right? even then, the masterpiece like has a lot of, I mean, not as many breaks, right. obviously, but it has, I mean, it has its breaks there too. Right. It's just hard to do this. But it's, I think it looks great yeah. though. For $50 a, toy, that's awesome. A $50 toy. Now, now you see, one last thing I want to point out. You see on a, these both thighs over here, mm -hmm. that big piece which forms the top of the thigh, kind of that oval shaped piece. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I don't have a photo of this, there's actually a U shaped uh, swivel, I'll call it, or something. I don't even know what to call the type of joint because I've never seen it on a transformer before. But basically, as you move the leg back and forth, uh, a flat circular piece is on a track and it just goes in a U shape as you move the leg <laughs> to wow. keep that leg shape. So that's just an example of these extraordinary things they've done that are new and different in this line. That's incredible. That is awesome, man. I can't wait to get that. I, I hope that's one that ship early <laughs> <laughs> as well as this guy right here. All right. Oh, so boy. Optimus Primal. Yes. Um, so, Optimus Primal, as you can see in this photo, it's, I keep saying it, but it's the TV show jumped out into plastic form. Um, except what they did, again, was they amped up some of the details, right? So in the CG model, you know, this was the 90s, right? CG TV shows were not common. Uh, they flattened a lot of details on those yeah. CG models so that you didn't see a lot of little fur details or scale details, really. They had to, to animate a show that came out every week. You had to simplify the models. And that's why the masterpiece Optimus Primal looks very flat if, if, if you have him in beast mode, but that's on purpose to look like the CG of, of that era. This is meant to be, what if we took the CG of that era, took all the primary details maintain them but then amp them up to toy tech of our era and if you look at his arms and his shoulder armor you can see the fur lines that are sculpted in there uh but the other parts like the robotic details that are integrated into the organics and his head sculpt and the swords that's all right out of the the show uh each of his forearms has a dual cannon that pushes out uh like on the show those shoulder cannons are on on either side of his head they do fold back into the back compartment if you don't want them there um and uh this it, it this thing just blows my mind like i couldn't believe just, how good it looked oh man i'm so hyped it just and, looks so good and for you sal you're gonna want him and you're gonna want megatron because know. basically it's king kong versus the t-rex yeah <laughs> yeah i mean yeah that uh the I don't know what mode you have him in right now at home, but like. Oh, actually, thank you for bringing that up. Ta da! Oh, perfect. Yeah. There we go. That's Look good. That. That, and yeah. he can, he can, like, this is, you know, this is him in his, of course, you know, uh, chest beating, you know, King Kong type mode. But you can also have him walk on all fours, you know, like, uh, you know, I'll see if I can do it really quick. This is, this is quick and dirty, folks. It, it looks better than this in regular photos, but you can see how. You could also have him yeah. more like a traditional or real life gorilla. Yeah. And yeah, there's a little bit of robot part peakage, which I don't think you could really help at this price point. You know, it's a $30 Voyager price point, uh, but he looks great. They, uh, they yeah. definitely, uh, and I've mentioned this before, like uh, made a conscious effort into <laughs> capitalizing in the fact is a Kong movie coming out. Yeah. <laughs> um, with the, you know, slight tweak of making that gorilla mode look a little bit Kongish. Um, well, um, no doubt. The, the original Beast Wars designer back in the 90s, when, when he was asked about the why Primal is, you know, a gorilla, why Megatron is a T Rex, uh, he cited the classic Kong movie, you know. The oh, old, wow. Did he? Okay. Yeah. As that's that's exciting to me. Kong. Yeah, and I thought you'd like that. Yeah. And Megatron is the T-Rex. So it's, it's this rivalry that's stuck in his mind. And keep in mind, he, that gentleman's much older than us, right? So for him, that was like a movie of his childhood or his yeah. youth, right? So it made this impression. And now here we are, 
2020, right, with a Kong movie coming out and another Kong movie that already came out with him fighting critters, and that that the DNA of that play pattern is still with us, and I think yeah. that's super cool. That is super cool. Wow, that is awesome. I that is like a little tidbit that I cannot wait to put in my reviews of those guys <laughs> because that is that is so cool and it makes so much sense. I never really thought about that. Like, yeah, like why, like why make them those two? You know, right. like that's like such a except for King Kong, that is not a natural like enemy, yeah. you know, thing. <laughs> why did I never think it? That is amazing. Yeah, that is awesome. actually. If you look at the original Beast Wars uh, Ultra Class Megatron and Optimus, given the sculpting of the time, if you look at them, they kind of do have that King Kongish, you know, versus the T Rex in black and white type look to them. Mm -hmm. um, they probably nailed it more with Megatron than Primal, um, but yeah, that that rivalry, I think, it, it, it's now for Transformers fans. It's now embedded in our minds as yeah. Primal versus Megatron. Right. Um, but I love knowing that its DNA is something much much older. Ah oh, man, that's so cool. That is so cool. So this was awesome, man. This was like really cool. So you want to show us some more uh, close-ups of some of these uh, other toys really quick? Uh, let's see what I can get over here. Um, the photo is pretty much... Just, just sure. you know. But here's uh, here's Mr. Bunny Ears himself, and I, I will Very keep cool. calling him that. because I think he looks great. Um, actually, let me see how fast I can do something here. But one thing I... that's really kind of neat. So I was talking about his... His, um, his his uh, cockpit before. So that actually folds out of his chest. And I'm trying not to break this thing as I'm doing this. <laughs> so check this out. So so I just, like, in a few seconds, unfold this. So this is his inside his chest. So that's his head, right? Folded mm -hmm. into his chest. And then this piece, this piece folds out again, right? So that folds out. Now, but it's not over because it extends yet again <laughs> uh, to form the tip. And I'll have I'll need two hands to do this, so give me a sec. But I, I thought this was so great. Um, I'm going to use a weaponizer part to get the little needle nose out. This is why I don't do video reviews. You're much better at this than I am, so. <laughs> so. Here we go. So now the, the the needle came out of that end. So this piece extends into this piece, which then extends into this piece. That's really and cool. that's how they wound up forming that nose cone, which is amazing. It's that's a cool piece of engineering. It's, you know, and it's simple. It's like a hinge yeah. and a hinge and a hinge, right? But they've never done it before. Yeah. And now that I have it in my hands, I'm like, oh, that's so obvious. <laughs> Why yeah. did this they do that I mean, they've gotten... And I've been saying this like since Siege because I feel like they it was a turning point. Siege was definitely a turning point. Um, you know, I, you know. Also, it's I feel like it is telling. Yeah, that guy is he's so cool. It is telling that like Takara and Hasbro I, when they decided to go full on, you know, together, there was definitely an exchange of an I of ideas definitely happening. You yep. know, so I feel like overall the design and engineering of all of these guys has raised a level because I'm sure there's so many notes going back and forth because obviously Takara handles the engineering and design of the MPs, you know, and but they're talking back and forth because you're seeing so much engineering that's usually reserved for the MPs trickling down into generations now. Uh, and it's obvious, like it's been obvious for a little while. Uh, that's, that's been happening. Um, well, it's, and it's, it's just awesome. It's interesting you say that Sal, because you, you've latched onto something that I'm not sure everybody has. Um, so uh, for, for those wondering within Takara, um, they, they have, and just like in Hasbro, they have several sub teams of Transformers. You got your MP guys, you got your Generation slash Selects guys, and believe it or not, yes, you also have your Cyberverse guys. Mm -hmm. um, you, because of the unique relationship that Takara and um, and Hasbro have, they have to work hand in hand on the line. A lot of the engineering you see in terms of transformation um, primarily comes from Takara. Um, mm -hmm. They 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 come 
so it's a back and forth and Hasbro does a lot of the, what I would call aesthetic design. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to the actual, how do these things fold in on each other and so on, um, that is a lot more coming straight from Japan. Now, the fun thing that we were told at, actually, I think one of the unboxing events, we were told this, is um, the crew in Japan is very competitive between Masterpiece and Generations. Oh. And the Generations guys love pushing things because they want to show the MP guys what they can do at their price point. So we benefit from that because we got guys from the Generations team over there, like kind of going into the Masterpiece guys. I was going, oh, how are you doing? How are you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to try to do something like that, too. And, you know, next thing you know, you wind up with uh, a guy like this. So cool. <laughs> Super cool. Now, I, and, I figured it had to be something along those lines or you know, something going on there because it's it's been getting better and better in those terms and you know you have and you this is a conversation you see in multiple groups forums everywhere you know why and you see a lot of people saying that about the studio series stuff too like why should we get mps anymore <laughs> why are we spending ridiculous amounts when and it's it is the, the thing that's interesting is the mps have gone up a lot yes in price uh yes. over the last two years a lot like i mean two extraordinary amounts the generations line has not changed really in a while like it's, it's been, been yeah. like it fluctuated a, a few yeah. bucks right like not much though like that's cool i See love the cannon not extending out yeah. quite as much yeah. here let me do that thing there focus there you go yeah. So you can see that's actually how it's supposed to look. Mm -hmm. But yeah, keep going. So yeah, I just think like based on that alone, like the price point hasn't changed that much, you know, compared to the massive changes in the MP price points. Yeah. has pushed a lot more folks to, you know, give up on that MP line. I don't know about totally give up because I think – you know, there's going to be people that are still going to get the full lines. That's one. And then there'll be people where they'll like pick and choose and be like, well, that character, I really have to have a masterpiece version yeah. of like, you know, um, like me, like I really want Leo Convoy. Like I, like I really do. Like I, it's just one of those things that I haven't, I would love to get it by the end of the year because I would love to try to, you know, um, see where it fits into the best of the year for me. Yeah. Um, because it's something I really, really want that I had on pre-order and unfortunately had to cancel when it did drop. Um, but, you know, I just haven't done it yet. So we'll, we'll see how it goes, if I could fit that in before the end of the year somewhere. Yeah. But you know, the uh, last time we yeah. got together, um, one of your uh, viewers asked us, you know, when we had Craig and the other guys mm -hmm. on, they asked me about the uh, the Masterpiece star screen. And uh, now that pricing has come out for it, I think it is it near three hundred dollars? Yeah, it's like close. That? Yeah, two, two something. It's like two fifty at least, right? Um, I, it's not that I don't want it. It's just in the face of everything else I have to purchase, it's difficult. You yeah. know, I'm not. You know, despite the size of my collection, I'm not a millionaire over here. You know, but look, if I won the mega millions, it wouldn't be a question. Right. <laughs> just put them all on pre order, right? Sure. But you know, I have to pick and choose. Now, yeah, I have wave one of kingdom here. And I'm very lucky. I'm very fortunate, very humbled by that. But you know what? I'm going to have to buy wave two, three, four, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I also collect Cyberverse because I like to cover the, the, the line aimed towards like kind of the teens. Right. Yeah. And um, I do buy rescue bots that may surprise some people, but I think the designs are really adorable and charming. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they're a valid part of the transformers experience. Um, as you know, Sal, I, Bought, bought bots by the metric ton. I know. <laughs> they were Those were fun. <laughs> so, you know, there's no way I can buy all these different segments and say, well, now I'm going to go blow $300 on one figure when I already have masterpieces of that character that are excellent. And I already have this guy how many times over in classics, yeah. generations, universe? Like, the, look. Earthrise Starscream is pretty darn great. <laughs> you know, he's not a masterpiece, but if you want a G1-ish Starscream, 
it's like all right, thirty dollars for a toy that I will display, I will play with, I'm going to get to review. It won't take me four hours to transform, <laughs> or, or you know, the masterpiece star screen, which I got to be honest, folks, uh, this is may also come as a shock to some people. About eighty percent of my masterpieces are still sealed because I I just don't have the time to take them out and fiddle with them for forty five minutes. Now our buddy Craig, he he's mastered them no pun intended um he can transform them in like 20 30 minutes flat, yeah that was that great. was a big reason for me too was the transform you know i don't know what it is but as i got older i just had less and less patience for transforming some of these <laughs> figures it, it's just crazy like because i love transformers i you know like i it's just the transforming part was just something that like just fell away from me like it would just make me crazy to transform certain figures especially the mp ones i think um Part of it is also with the more recent releases, you've had to be super, super, super careful, right? Uh, there with Hound, there there were very common reports of a very specific point on that figure breaking for a lot mm -hmm. of people. Uh, with MP44, which was the big controversial four hundred dollar figure at some point, um, there were people reporting that they were just snapping parts right off. You know, I mean, you pay that much money for a figure, you do not want parts falling off. No, uh, I bought definitely not. Beast Wars Megatron masterpiece, right? Uh, it's about three something for that figure because he was Beast Wars Megatron. But I got to tell you that the QC on it is a little scary because he, for lack of a better term, he's got a crotch issue <laughs> 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 where some people were taking him. And I'm not even talking transformation right out of box. The crotch piece had a big crack in it. So, you know, I got lucky mine hasn't had that, but I haven't transformed mine yet either because I'm scared to death it's going to crack. And again, you pay 300 something dollars for something, it shouldn't be busting on no. your first transformation. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not, man. So, I mean, there's uh, some cool stuff, you know, coming out in the Kingdom line, though. And uh, this stuff is showing up, guys. So you're going to get some <laughs> really, really cool, not mp but mp light <laughs> you know mp esque now like it's getting to that point you know so you got a lot of cool stuff and you know we we just saw yesterday some leaks happen of some upcoming figures i don't know if we want to mention them like, at all it's like wave one is over <laughs> yeah forget wave one we're already on to wave two um it's crazy so we got some really cool ones upcoming uh as well i i don't think i'm gonna mention it because uh you know well it's we... not official yet i mean yeah exactly darn official but you yeah know, i mean know. the pics look very, exactly right that was weird because usually when it's leaked it's not that perfect of a yeah pick so um, it's I, probably gonna happen soon i'm gonna go guessing it's it's a retailer leak i like, think so yeah that's what we we're talking about in the chat yeah images in their like wholesale ordering yeah they have the, the portals that they have yeah. and yeah that that's probably what happened because those picks are very very uh very sharp so you, anybody guys if you're curious just go out check them out you know they're not official yet so you know we're trying to keep everything very official in this conversation so let's uh, let's keep it at that especially since we're talking about stuff that like ben like was you know uh given access to early so yeah i want to honor that uh, and not talk about stuff that's not official yet. Uh, but very cool stuff for sure. Ben, I really thank you for coming on, man, and uh, talking about this further. I was like, when you, you know, sprung this on everyone yesterday, we were like, whoa, this is incredible. <laughs> it led to like uh, pretty much a half day conversation in our repack chat. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me tell you, the, the, the thing that's difficult about these events is you don't get a lot of time between the time the event happens and the embargo lifts. Right. So everybody is going to report simultaneously, right? And and look, let's be real. We all want the hits, right? We all want the visitors. Sure. Uh, me, I just want people to like realize I exist again. <laughs> you know. So I was like, I got to get this up. Yeah. You know, it was noon yesterday, and I said, all right, you know, I got to make this happen. I got up extra early, took the photos and so on, and then uh, got it up there as soon as I could and started blasting it out. But it, you know yeah. that. Uh, that uh, pressure, I'm sure you felt it before, Sal, where you just want to get something out, yeah. and get it done, you know, by a certain time. It's it's work. and yeah, It's uh, work, you know, but it's, but it's, it's worth it. You know, it's fun and it's worth it. Like, you know, I always say this, that, like, 
it's hard to run that race with everyone, you know, and like a little channel like me, I really can't do it like, you know, so often. But when you do get an opportunity, you got to run with it. You know, you got to try uh, to do it like as fast as possible. Man, like I got to say, like I I was one of the, the first people to get that first wave of Studio Series Transformers out, um, you know, when they came out. Because they, if you recall, they put those pre-orders up. Right. Like, like that, like that Sunday of toy, f it was a toy, it was toy fair, right? When uh, yeah, they yeah, did yeah. that. And uh, it came like the next day for me. Like I pre-ordered wow. it. I ordered them during what we were doing a repacked, like a review show. Uh -huh. And I ordered them while we were doing that. While you were talking <laughs> about them, I ordered them. <laughs> and they came the next day for me. So I was able to get up all my reviews. Those are still some of the highest as far as transformers go those are the highest uh you know watched videos on my channel for transformers was that set of reviews and i'm like you know it was one of those things where if i wanted to keep just doing transformers for a while i, I would have probably have built a good transformers audience <laughs> here but it's not like the number one focus of the channel so yeah. like you know I, it was like one of those things that i was just like i was right there I, it was right time right place and the ability to to get up those videos right away uh helped me out a lot but yeah so when that happens you got to run with it oh yeah for you, sure you gotta strike while the iron is hot I, yeah. I i just try to do it as much on the up and up as i can you know yeah. Uh, yeah. i know you could buy early prototypes or whatever or early factory samples on on ebay um that's been the case since the 90s i mean that's not new yeah. Um, and you know, I mean, if, if that's your thing, okay, more power to you, do your thing. That's just not my thing. You know, I got, I got more than enough to review without having yeah. to. <laughs> that's how I feel. Like I could do it with like certain lines and I just refuse to like run that type of race because why should I pay that much more for this stuff? Like just to have your YouTube numbers or whatever is never going to cover the amount mm. that you just spent. Like I, you know, you see it a lot in like a lot of the Hasbro lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're paying that much for like, let's say Marvel legends, you're paying triple the price. You're crazy. You know, like that's, you're never going to make that back on a Marvel legends review. Uh, you know, like it's just not going to happen. It's just not worth it to me. And it's, and it's a little underhanded, you know, like, so I just, I don't like it. You know, yeah, if I, I could get stuff first, properly um yes. you know awesome you yes, know exactly otherwise i got enough to review where i'm not gonna i'm not going crazy about that stuff and you know it's it all comes and it does and it does build your channel for sure sure however i i'd rather i'd rather not do it and, and you know do this the proper way yep. so. uh I, it's funny though because i think like the there's one gentleman who's uh reviewed a whole bunch of the studio series 86 guys already and you know, I think he's based in Asia. Um, and I do wonder nowadays if it's easier to get your hands on those almost yeah. like not it's like semi legit, like um, meaning they didn't like buy someone off at the factory to get it to them. Like it's actually probably appeared in a store over there somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's you know, possible. In that case, it's totally you know, possible. Yeah, that's doable. I'll tell you, yeah. I have a fun little action figure story for your audience. Uh, when I was a kid, it was about six years old. I went to visit Hong Kong with my, uh, to visit my great grandmother with my mom, and you know, keep in mind at the time, manufacturing uh, was in different parts of Asia. It was mostly China, you know, that that was doing a lot of the manufacturing of toys, Kenner, and everything back then. Star Wars was the big line at the time, and it was hard enough for me to get a Star Wars figure as a kid to convince my parents to spend the money. Uh, and my mom said, "Oh, you know what?" Uh, while we're out in the street in Hong Kong, I think we can get you one. I'm like, "What are you talking about?" You know, in the street. And there were literally ladies, like little old ladies, who I guess worked at the factories. And I don't know if they snuck out samples or these were the rejects. I, I don't know where they got them, but they literally would just have a cardboard box and figures in like little Ziplocs <laughs> with, with their accessories. And yeah. they looked legit like these were the actual sculpts. I couldn't tell you about the deco, mm -hmm. but and they were cheap. They were, I mean, they were basically selling them for like, I don't know, at the time it was, I think the equivalent of maybe two, three bucks US mm -hmm. a piece. And, you know, I was, it's as a kid, your, your mind is just kind of blown. It's like, where, where is this action figure magic box come from? And uh, my mom speculated, she said, well, 
they know someone at the factory, they work at the factory and they just, these things are out now. I almost guarantee you whatever figures I saw back then probably hadn't hit US retail yet, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's kind of funny how these things get into people's hands sometimes. And I sometimes wonder, I wish I could travel to Asia and yeah. just kind of bop around and see if there's still like, are there still- I'm sure there are. Workers doing I'm this? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there, it is all of that. You know, like I'm sure it is, figures are out early in some, you know, spots, figures, leak out yeah, <laughs> in right. other spots so i'm sure there's a lot of everything going on it is where they are manufactured so right. you know when reviewers from there you know are getting them out there first or getting them out there super early right you know they, there's so many ways it could possibly go you know so i don't know i try not to like I don't know. I just don't know. So it's like, it's hard for me to like frown down on anybody doing it because you just, you know, I do know for a fact reviewers here getting that stuff are paying top dollar oh, for it. Yeah. So that's a different story, you know, yeah. like, uh, but that's all on you too. Like you go do what you got to do. If you, you know, like if you're getting it, you know, on the up and up and, you know, are willing to pay the amount to ship it and whatever, you know, fine, go for yeah. it. You know, I, I just, I just have too much to get, you know, that I like, <laughs> you know, like, I just like, you know, I'm not going to spend extra on, on any of this stuff. I never do. You know, the only things I I'll spend more money than it's worth is stuff that's old already. Yeah. You know, like if I'm like eBaying stuff, I don't care about that, but you're never going to see me like paying like, scalper prices to get stuff early you know that's not going to happen or markups because they're early no way I you know can't. that's just I, I just can't bring I, myself to do it no i'm not gonna do it you know, you know there's what? too I many don't... cool toys out there to to talk about that i i think so you, you you're in this situation too like they could literally stop making toys today and you'd be reviewing for years oh yeah yeah i <laughs> like... mean seriously like you know, when I started the channel, I already had a huge collection here already. And there's like stuff on the shelves that I could review if I wanted to. But I have, I literally have a whole like rack of boxes uh, that, are, that I, you know, I haven't re opened yet. Like, or yep. cr I've cracked open a little bit, looked at them, put them back. All right, yep. I'll, I'll get to them, you know? So it's one of those, yeah, I, I could, you know, not buy anything right now and I'd still have stuff. For a while i could put out a review a day for like the next year and a half if i want easily, easily. <laughs> so with no problem all right guys i think we're gonna end it here ben is awesome seeing you like actually seeing you man like i haven't seeing. seen you since uh january that's insane <laughs> you know uh so uh, you know it's really good seeing you hopefully we could have coffee again sometime soon gosh yes you know Been like it is insane um you know folks wear your mask, you know, do the proper thing, social distance. Stay Let's safe. all stay safe. Let's all get out of this together as soon as possible, you know, so we could have our, you know, so we can have our coffee <laughs> like, and, you know, and all, I, you know, like get back to, you know, some semblance of normal, you know, um, it, but it takes all of us working together to do so. Absolutely. So hopefully, you know, but it was great uh, talking to you, man. This was awesome. I'm glad we got to expand on this. Uh, guys, at 10 p.m., I just wanted to mention it again. I am actually premiering another video that I started talking about earlier. It is a God a reaction video to the news that came out recently that there's a couple of new uh, Godzilla Playmates toys that are coming out in the spring and more plans that they have uh, because the uh, vice president of marketing of Playmates toys did an interview recently with Toho Kingdom. I only found out about it today, even though that interview was out for a week already. I have no idea how it slipped past me, but I decided to do like a reaction video on that. Um, so it's basically in the same format as this. It's not really live, but I will do a premiere and I can answer any questions in that. So I will be sticking around the YouTube for a little while longer. That premieres at 10. So folks join uh, me for that. Hey, I got one question for you here. Before we leave, Ben, what would you prefer, a Kingdom Big Convoy or a Tiger Hawk? Oh, I, that's an easy one for me. Big Convoy, all the way. I love Tiger Hawk, but Big Convoy has a special place in my heart. <laughs> I still want that, you know, that Big Convoy that you could still get in most, you know, oh, like. But his price went up like crazy. 
<laughs> like, oh yeah, I no. did not see coming. Oh really? Hmm. I have to check like, in on that. If you mean the one that comes with the extra accessory, the Matrix Buster, that one skyrocketed. Oh, okay. The initial release, I think, is still a nominal price, but that yeah. second release sold out pretty quickly. Oh, okay, yeah, no, no. I think it, I'm talking about the original release. I, I always look at it on uh, HLJ. Still has, I think it's uh, whatever it is, Encore or whatever. I, I don't even yeah, know the what it is. First one, I think they have. Yeah. yeah um i still want that one like they put it on sale every once in a while and i'm always like about to click but like right now i just feel like that box is gonna be big and it's gonna like you know shipping out of japan right now is super expensive uh, it's yeah. like that yeah <laughs> you know kind of like that yeah oh, we'll see maybe next it's time bigger than a bread box. they're, they're um, definitely gonna have another sale soon so uh, we'll see you know what big convoy just conceptually tickles me and the toy is fun like okay. he, he's he's you know the one robot uh army basically uh you know that's a variant of what he's actually called but you know he's got these shoulder rocket launchers and that giant cannon and he was one of the first figures uh back in the day where his chest panel popped open it was a matrix that was removable but not just removable he could hold it in both hands that was one of the first convoy style figures to be able to do that hmm. so that was a big a uh, bit of hype for me back in the day with that figure but also he just the aesthetics of him look amazing like he you pose him out with the cannon and everything he just looks killer I, a very anime uh, that's yeah that looks all i mean I, I really want that figure <laughs> but uh kingdom version that would be uh interesting i don't kingdom think we're gonna get it i don't think that's we're gonna cool. get it but um it would be very cool just give us Star Saber. That's all. Yes. I'm going to end with that. Give us Star Saber <laughs> by the end of this. I want it. I have to have it. So. Oh, I want him too. And on that note, everyone, thanks for joining us. Ben, thanks again, man. Thanks Until for next time, me. peace out, Take peeps. Take care, everyone.